Today's topic is factorization method. We will first learn splitting the middle term. You can see the example on the screen. 2x square plus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Here the middle term is 5x. By multiplying 3 and 2, we get plus 6. The possible factors are plus 1 and plus 6, plus 2 and plus 3. Can you tell which one is appropriate for us? Yes. When you add 3 and 2, we get 5. So we go with it. Therefore, 2x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 3 equals 0. Now taking x plus 1 common, we get 2x into x plus 1 plus 3 into x plus 1 equals 0. In, therefore, x plus 1 into 2x plus 3 equals 0. Note, if ab equals 0, then either a equals 0 or b equals 0. Therefore, x plus 1 equals 0 or 2x plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 3 by 2. Let's look at another example. x square minus 15x plus 56. The middle term here is minus 15x. Let's split the factors of 56 now. 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 4 and 14, 7 and 8. Can you tell me which one we'll take? Yes, 7 and 8. When you add minus 7 and minus 8, we get minus 15. Therefore, x minus 7 into x minus 8 equals 0. Therefore, x equals to positive 7 or x equals to positive 8. Therefore, the solution set to this equation is 7 and 8. Let's look at another example now. As you can see on your screen, looking at this example, you might think it's a bit complicated, but we will tell you it's very simple. First, we need to see 4 minus 18 is equal to minus 14. 18 minus 4 is equal to plus 14. We need to get plus 14. Let's look at the factors of 72 now. 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18. For us, 4 and 18 will be most appropriate, so we go with it. Therefore, 3x squared plus 18x minus 4x minus 24 equals 0. Therefore, x plus 6 into 3x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x equals to minus 6 or x equals to 4 by 3. In other words, the solution set to this equation is negative 6 and positive 4 by 3. Now, let's start with transformation of quadratic equations. Now, you will be well versed with three methods of solving quadratic equations. You will sometimes get equations with much, much more difficulty level. We need to solve these equations by using some quadratic formulas. Let me introduce you with some quadratic formulas. x plus 1 upon x square equals x square plus 2 plus 1 upon x square. We thus derive the formula x square plus 1 upon x square equals x plus 1 upon x the whole square minus 2. We have another formula which is very important. x minus 1 upon x the whole square which is equal to x square minus 2 plus 1 by x the whole square. We thus derive this formula, x square plus 1 upon x square equals x minus 1 upon x the whole square plus 2. Always keep in mind, for positive it is negative and for negative it is positive. Now let's start some examples. As you can see on the screen, this question, you have surely remembered the two identities. Looking at this question, it might look difficult, but I am telling you, it is very easy to solve this because we are going to make it very very small. We first need to substitute the formula that we learned. We thus get x square plus 1 by x square equals x plus 1 by x the whole square minus 2. By substituting we can see what we get on the screen. Now we just need to do another simple step. We must substitute x plus 1 by x square for m. We thus get m square minus 2 plus 29m which equals to 102. So now does it seem to be easy? Now let's proceed further m square minus 2 plus 29m equals minus 102. Now taking 102, on the left hand side we get m square plus 29m plus 100 equals 0. Now again the conventional splitting the middle term method. You will be very familiar with this. We thus get m square plus 25m plus 4m plus 100 equals 0. Therefore m plus 25 into m plus 4 equals 0. Therefore m equals to negative 25 or m equals to negative 4. The sum is not yet over. It's now time to resubstitute x plus 1 by x equals m. We thus get equation 1 as x plus 1 by x equals minus 25 and equation 2 as x plus 1 by x equals minus 24. Let's take equation 1 now into our consideration. x square plus 1 equals minus 25x. You'll wonder how we got this. We multiplied throughout by x. We need to try out now with the formula method. Delta equals b square minus 4ac. Therefore, delta equals 621. Now, using the formula method, we get x equals to minus 25 plus or minus root of 621 upon 2. Now, let's go back to the equation 2. x plus 1 by x equals minus 4. 
Therefore, x square plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, delta here is again b square minus 4ac. Delta here comes up to 12. Therefore, x equals to minus 4 plus or minus 2 root 3 upon 12. After simplifying it a bit, we get x equals minus 2 plus or minus root of... Now, let's move on to another example, as you can see on your screen. This one is quite similar to the previous one, but did you notice here? It's x minus 1 by x and not x plus 1 by x. So we need to use the second identity here, that is x square plus 1 upon x square equals x minus 1 upon x the whole square plus 2. We thus get what you can see on your screen. Now substituting a for x minus 1 by x, we get 6 into a square plus 2 plus 23a equals minus 8. Therefore, 6a square plus 23a plus 20 equals 0. Now, the convention splitting the middle term, you will be very familiar with it by now, so I don't need to explain. Therefore, 2a plus 5 into 3a plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, a equals minus 5 by 2 or a equals minus 4 by 3. The sum is not yet over. We now need to substitute a equals x minus 1 by x. We thus get two equations. The first one is x minus 1 by x equals minus 5 by 2. From 1, we then get 2x square plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals minus 5 plus or minus root of 41 upon 4. Now, the second equation we get is x minus 1 by x equals minus 4 by 3. Therefore, 3x square plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now, using the conventional formula method, we get x equals minus 4 plus or minus root of 52 upon 6. By simplifying it a bit, we get x equals minus 2 plus or minus root of 13 upon 3. Now let's try out with some other types of examples. As you can look on the screen. Looking at the sum, what do you think? How should we proceed further? Let's substitute x square plus 20x equals s. The equation thus gets reduced to s into s plus 20 which equals to minus 64. s square plus 20s equals minus 64. s square plus 16s plus 4s plus 64 equals 0 by the conventional splitting the middle term method. Therefore, s plus 16 into s plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, s equals negative 16 or s equals negative 4. Now, we are again need to resubstitute x plus 20x as s. We thus get x squared plus 20x equals minus 16. Therefore, x squared plus 20x plus 16 equals 0. Now, x equals minus 20 plus or minus root of 336 upon 2. By doing a bit simplification, we thus get x equals minus 10 plus or minus 2 root 21. Now let's look at the second equation. x squared plus 20x equals minus 4. x plus 20x, x squared plus 20x plus 4 equals 0. x equals minus 20 plus or minus root of 384 upon 2. Now by simplification we get x equals minus 10 plus or minus 4 root 6. Now let's try another example. 3y square plus 300 upon y square equals 87. Always remember, when you see such sums, the first thing we need to do is to remove the denominator. Multiply throughout by y square. We thus get 3y raised to 4 minus 87y square plus 300 equals 0. Now the equation is of degree 4. To convert it into equation of degree 2, we just need to substitute q for y square. We thus get 3q square minus 87q plus 300 equals 0. By splitting the middle term, we get q minus 25 into 3q minus 12 equals 0. Therefore, q equals to positive 25 or q equals to 4. But q equals y square. Therefore, y square equals 25. Therefore, y equals root of 25. Therefore, y equals plus or minus 5. And on the other equation, y square equals 4. Therefore, y equals root of 4. Therefore, y equals plus or minus 2. Therefore, the possible solutions to this equation are y equals to plus or minus 5 or y equals to plus or minus 2. We hope that you like this chapter. Stay tuned for the next video. Subscribe T3.